Today we're going to take a look at my studio and just think about whether or not you can make a space for yourself in your home as a studio. Let's get started. Having a studio is really a privilege and for a long time I did not have one. What I used instead was just a table, but it was my dedicated table. No one else could work on it but me. This is a stock photo and this is what I think people imagine an artist studio to be. Mostly white, sort of organized. <laughs> I mean, it does not look homey, it does to me. The stereotype, of course, is that a studio will look more like this, a hodgepodge of things. I couldn't work in a space like this, but everybody's different. Some people like it really neat, some people like it to be uh, completely in process and part of their work. This is a friend of mine's studio and this is the neatest I think I ever saw it actually. Um, <laughs> she, she is one of those people who prefers to work in a place that is not all organized like mine is. And uh, what's coming up next is a shot of the way surfaces usually look in her studio. When I walk in, I can never get heads or tails of what's happening. But what comes out of that studio is extraordinary. And she's a multimedia artist. She will work in watercolor, also oil paint, and does paper mache. So, you know, you do you. So here's a tour of my studio. It is a 12 by 12 space, so it's not very big. It has windows on three sides and one solid wall. It also has a glass door, but I keep the shade to the door down. That's a signal to people in my house not to bother me. If that, door, if that shade is down, don't come in because I'm thinking carefully. So the room is composed of different zones. This is what I would call, say, the technology zone. The phone is there, the computer is there for editing, and the printer is there, and some organizational tools. This is usually where uh, it is a backdrop for me when I'm doing my talk to you kinds of live stream, uh, streams. So that is the one wall in the room. I keep a chair there, which has to be really comfortable, but it also will swivel so that everything is within arm's reach. There's some extra paper there and a couple of props. But I try to keep surfaces as clean as possible. I need a clean environment in which to work. A lot of people don't, but I do. So turning around in the opposite direction, this is where I paint. I paint in the pink chair. That's my easel right there. Um, I keep that tripod with the gooseneck behind me. That's what I use when I'm filming my, uh, my demos. The hairdryer is right there. Any kind of whiteout that I need. Tape, pencils, erasers. That's all on the left-hand side on that drafts table. And I can use that drafts table for um, very careful work if I'm going to do that. And the palette is right there on the right, always at the ready, with all the paints squeezed out into it. Uh, and there is another tripod. I use that tripod if I'm going to um, record the palette, which I don't do that often, but you know, you, you like to have choices. That small table I use for setups, because the sun comes in right there, oftentimes in the morning, so I like to get a good uh, setup done. This is the one organizational piece of furniture I have in the room. It's a variety of things in there. Let's say tape, some props, uh, origami paper, um, my book. <laughs> Let's see, different cords and things. Um, but all organized very, very carefully so that I know where everything is. Because once I, like I said, once I start painting, I don't want my, any uh, stray thoughts to go on. This is an area right behind the door. You know, behind the door is a good utilization of space. Keep a couple of tripods there, some boxes for sending things. And then I have these command hooks. Command hooks are really terrific because you can put them on any kind of a uh, sheetrocked wall and remove them anytime you want to without any damage. So um, I keep my apron there, a cloth, an extra shirt, and then various cords. I do find that anytime you can get something up off the floor, it allows you to keep a space feeling less cluttered and a little cleaner. And that was, uh, there's some windows way up high that I usually keep the shades down on. I can't reach up that high, so I have a little hook for that. But um, just showing you that um, the room has a tremendous amount of light and versatility. So I kind of love this space. I love my, and there's, you can see my house briefly. So that's the 360 of my studio. I used to have a much bigger studio, but it didn't have the same lighting that this has. And I'm tempted sometimes to move back to it because of all the good times that I had there. But uh, I feel pretty centered and nested in this space. I think that I'm going to stay in this space. So 
this is not this was not built explicitly for a studio it was uh, i think i already said or i can't remember but it was uh, just a porch it was a, i guess you would call it like a sunroom so it wasn't built for me but we did winterize it and put some uh, heat in it and added a floor to it so that i could be in there year round so i've never had a studio built for me i've always adapted to whatever spaces i've had and um, right now this is this is where I live. This is what I call my Disneyland. I'm happiest in this space, and I'm really lucky to have it. So if you can create a dedicated space, that's really all that matters. Have your paints at the ready so that there's no excuses and so that you can keep your stream going, that you don't have to start and stop all the time. And if you don't have the ability to have a studio, as many people don't, you know, you can always go outdoors because, um, you know, that's an option. You can't take that away from you. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.